Hello and welcome, Janet Beckers here. Well, let's think about this. When you're coming to growing your business, there's going to be certain things that you find difficult, that you totally suck at and they hold you back. Should you be spending your time in getting better at doing those things so that they're not going to hold you back? Or what about the other side, the things that come really, really easy for you? that you find so easy to do that you quite often discount that they're even something valuable. Should you be spending your time getting even better at those things? Or is that just really inefficient? Because you're already good at those things, so why spend any longer getting better at those? Is that going to help you to grow your business anymore? Well, that is the topic of today's podcast. We're going to be talking about the Gallup strength test, the strength finders test, the strength assessment test. It's just been renamed. Um, We're going to be talking about that particular personality test, what it is, why would you want to be taking it anyway, and where the ways that I have used the results of that to help my clients and to help myself. So first of all, Um, Just get ready to take some notes, okay? Because today is like a total masterclass. We're going to dive in really deep. This is just me, and this is a teaching masterclass. So get ready to take some notes. I will have here for you a cheat sheet that you can download that's going to be able to give you um, some questions that you can ask yourself so that you can then um, make the most of today's podcast. So you've got that to go there with it. It's like a study guide that I put together for you. But first of all, let's, I'll tell you where you can go to find out more um, because you may even want to go and just start exploring that um, as soon as you finish listening here. So let me have your attention right now, though. So if you just go for Clifton, C-L-I-F-T-O-N, just Google in Clifton Strengths Finders. Just do that and you'll be able to find them. It's a Gallup. So it's Gallup, you know, that do all of the... The, the big surveys, all the big research, it comes from Gallup, G-A-L-L-U-P. So it's the Gallup Strength Test, Clifton Strength Test as well. Okay, so that's just to let you know that's what I'm talking about. So let's dive in deep about what is it? Why would you want to do this anyway? Okay, the thing that I found really interesting when I first learned about this was that the way, the way that the research was done, now, I really want to acknowledge a friend of mine, Anne Rolf, uh, because she's, she's one of our members in our tribe. She works with corporations, with mentoring programs, and she also works with building teams. And a part of that is actually running whole day workshops on the strength tests. And it was fascinating. So I went along to one of these from Anne's this is where I learned a lot of this stuff and it has been fascinating. I've been using it with my clients ever since. Now, the way that it worked is a lot of times you might come across personality profiling and you think, you know, did somebody make this up over a bottle of wine and thought this is a really good marketing thing? Is there any kind of research that's been done behind this? So the thing that I love with this is because this has been designed through Gallup, it's actually been designed on like a ridiculous number of surveys that have been done and all the research that was done that brought out that there were 34 different strengths that individuals can have. Now, doesn't mean that everybody has those strengths. In fact, some people totally, totally, totally suck at some of those strengths. They're not strengths at all for them. But they've identified 34. And the interesting part is the combination of those is what makes us unique. In that, in fact, they were saying it's like one in $33 million, 33 million chance. Isn't that funny? I just automatically went dollars. Um, that you will have two people that have the same. So how interesting is that? They have them in the same order. So... I love that this has actually been based on a huge sample size and it's actually been from a scientific point of view where it's actually ended up with this. Now, that's just so that you understand that, you know, this is a very credible uh, test that you can be doing. It's not going to just be, you know, something that's just a marketing ploy. Now, why would you want to know about strengths? Now, this is another thing that I learned from Anne was... 
a study that that she she presented this study that had been done and it's really stuck in my mind ever since where they took people who were really really good at speed reading as a, just as an example speed reading is not a strength test by the way but this is an example people who were really really good at speed reading and people who weren't very good and they this is a nice one to do because you can actually measure you know how many words can you read in a minute then they found okay they graphed it and the people who weren't very good just had like a tiny little um, bar on the graph and the people who were naturally good at it were quite high might have been say four times as big then what they did is they gave both groups the same program to learn how to be better at speed reading and then they retested them now this is what I think is fascinating and why I'm now convinced that focusing on your strengths is absolutely the best thing you can do in your business what they did is these two groups had exactly the same training and then they measured them again now you would expect of course everybody's going to improve and that if they did improve that it may be made it so that they each each group doubled for example um, or maybe the people who were really poor out of it might have got even a greater amount and because you know they were starting from a lower point this is what I found fascinating. The people who were naturally not very good, when they did the course and studied and studied, when they were improved, they were the equal to the people who just did it naturally. And that's as high as they could get. That's as high as they could get. They could only just, with a lot of study and mastery, get as good as the people who just do it naturally without even trying. The other interesting part was the people who were naturally good at it when they spent time to perfect it and get really good at it, it was off the charts. Like their ratio of how much they improved was so much more than the people who weren't naturally good, who with really hard work still only got as good as people who were naturally good and didn't even try. So um, for me, that was just like, whoa, okay. It doesn't matter how hard I work at my weaknesses, I'm still only really very likely to be only getting as good as people who just do that naturally. But if I really, really focus on honing down the things that I do naturally well, I'm going to get really, really good at them really fast and be exceptional. And if I can be exceptional at a few things that I do, then that's all I really need to be able to create success. And I can create success in a much stronger way because I can always then fill in those gaps that I'm not very good at by creating a team of people who are really good at that stuff. So what I'm going to share with you here is I'm going to share with you openly when I did the test, what were my top five? Now, when you do the test, you've got a choice between two reports, one that will give you your top five and then one that gives you your listing for all 34. Now, I've only ever done the top five. Um, when we did the workshop with Anne, we only did the top five. That's all we needed. Um, and that's what I get my clients to do. So because that's really, if you just focus on those five things and really use them to understand yourself, it also allows you to embrace those things and improve them. And also to lighten up on yourself when there are things that you that you just think, oh, I'm so bad at that, that... Um, you know what, it allows you to lighten up on yourself and go, well, you know, that's just the way I'm made, baby. So let's not beat myself up too much about it. So let me share, I'll just share with you um, what mine are. And the interesting thing is every one of these 34 slot into four different categories or themes. So I'll go over those as well. This is Janet's just rule of thumb way like of, what does it all mean? Of course, you can go over to the website. I'll put the links in the show notes for you and also in the cheat sheet that I will make for you that you can download um, where you can go to get the test done. Um, and you can get heaps more information on it there. So I'll just give you the overall thing. All of those strengths tend to fall into, well, they all fall into one of four main themes. And some people will have nothing in some of those themes and I'll share with you there's one of those themes I've got nothing in <laughs> and another one that I've got three out of five in 
be really interesting for you to guess. Okay, so one of those is influencing. Like how can you, you know, what sort of strengths do you have or not have when it comes to being able to, you know, motivate um, people to do things? These could even, you know, with your sales skills as well um, and with motivating clients, with motivating a team. Then you've got strategic thinking. How, how, you know, how good are you at being able to um, think ahead, you know, what is possible and being able to make sense of it? Then you've got relationships, like how good, you know, what, what's your strengths in being able to make the sum, you know, you know, the, the group of people is, what, what is that, that cliche that says, you know, we're, we're greater than the sum of us all, like, you know, that you can actually make people, you know, work together um, to be able to do even things better, like through that relationships and how people interact. How good are you with those skills? And then also when it comes to like basically getting shit done, how are you at executing? You know, what's your way of getting things done? You know, are you a workhorse? Um, you know, are you good at taking things that are already existing and, and making them better? Um, are you an organizer? All those sorts of things. So um, there's those four themes. Now, what you might find now is you might be thinking, oh, yeah, okay, I can kind of get what I might be. What am I strong in? But of course, there's different nuances depending on your strength in those four themes. So even understanding those four themes that some people may be really heavily weighted in one particular theme and other people are really not very strong in that particular theme, even just knowing that can help you to know, okay, well, there's one area here that, you know, this is, I'm going to be good in this particular role and putting me in this particular role is probably not the wisest thing to do. Um, and of course, there's lots of other different, I just came to mind another really fantastic test, but I'll talk about that in another podcast that you can be doing, but um, you know, that really build on that. So this can be for you if you are in your business on your own, like are there things that you are doing that your core strengths do not fit into that particular thing? For example, executing, are you doing a lot of the work, the stuff that has to get done, but it's actually not one of your strengths. Are you better doing something else that reuses your other strengths and having somebody else that's the real implementer? Or are you a person that is a really, really good at the implementing, getting that stuff done, but communicating with other people and selling and influencing is really, really difficult for you and it's not one of your strengths at all? Maybe that's something that you need to be getting somebody else to do that part for you. So. That's just as you thinking about that if it's just you. Um, and if you're part of a team, well, it becomes really, really powerful. Understanding how to make the most of that combined team, putting people when there are certain projects and certain parts of a job to be done, are you getting the right people doing the right things? So that's understanding those four themes. So looking at those, <laughs> I'll just introduce you to mine because mine is the easiest one. I've got it here right in front of me. You might be interested to know I've actually, I'm just hold up this shit. If you're listening, you know, you can probably see it here. I've actually, um, I loved this test so much that I paid for every single person in our family, my husband, my son, my daughter, and my daughter's boyfriend and my son's girlfriend and we keep them up on the fridge as a way of having as a reference so we can understand oh that's why they do things that way um so i've just i do it as a little summary that i have it there on the on the side of the fridge there all the time we use it all the time in our family um so i've got this here for you so i'll be really curious if you've got those four things um might be interesting for you to know that, you know, there's one particular area, those themes that I don't have any of my strengths in my top five strengths, number six, seven, and eight may very well be here. But for me in my top five, the ones that are my zone of genius, the things that, you know what, if I can just really focus on doing, be putting myself in a position to do these, I will just knock it out of the park. But for me, the thing that is always going to be the thing that takes a lot of discipline is actually the executing. Really great at the ideas, strategizing, making, you know, planning it all out. But when it comes to the nitty gritty of doing all the boring stuff, oh, drives me crazy. 
Whereas I happen to be married to somebody um, who that's his number one strength is in that zone. So what a talk about it. That's, that's why our marriage has lasted well over 30 years um, because I get the ideas and then he makes them happen. Great. Um, so for me, that's an area that I don't have a lot of strengths in naturally. Um, but when it comes to influencing, baby, I am, I am heavily stacked there. So I will go over what my ones are, how I have used those in my own business, and a few things that I can give you that can counter them or can be nice complimentary ones for them that I've noticed that some of my clients have got. And then I really would love to hear from you, like, what's yours? Did you go and do the test? The Gallup Strengths Test or Clifton Strengths Test, just Google either of those and it'll come up. Um, did you do the test? What did yours come out? I would love to know. So I will share in here. I'll share you what mine are, but I'll also put them there in the in the um, in the show notes, so you can just go over and sticky beat, and we can compare. Love to know. Okay, so my number one, and these these are in order. Okay, so you've got from one to five. These are the order. Which things do you come naturally? For me, my number one is communication. Now, where does that mean for? Um, what's the downside of having that and what is an upside? Well, the obvious upside is that I can communicate my ideas to people. That is really good. The other upside is like when I'm develop when I'm creating, um, say, this podcast episode, I've had to do minimal preparation. I know I could run a one day workshop, a two day, three day workshop with minimal preparation because I can just communicate it. I can work out the things as I'm going. I can get them across. I can suss out when people aren't understanding it and I can adapt the message. So that is a real strength. There is a weakness that goes with that though. Because it comes easy for me, sometimes I'll underprepare. And so I don't do as good a job as I could because I go, ah, she'd be right, mate, I'll wing it. However, as part of me going, okay, if I want to be a much better communicator, that's going to mean taking the time to prepare better. Take the time to prepare. What is it I want to say? What is the core message I want to get across? And what else can I be doing to communicate? So that can be in person. It could be writing. Um, it could be through audio. It could be through doing more presentations. It can be being more of a, as a podcast guest as well as a presenter. Is what other ways can I communicate? And how can I really hone my message constantly to get clearer and clearer and conciser? So by me focusing on that, my aim is to become exceptional at that because I am naturally, that's my number one thing. So as you can see, if I decide to ignore it, I can be doing a good job, but nowhere near as good as I could, which means I'm not really being able to impact as many people as I can. Okay, so... For you, I'd be really curious, do you think communication may be one of those things? Like when I described what it means, the way I, I have quite often um, approached it, could you relate to that? Or are you going, no way, baby, is that my number one? Like I've really, really got to practice and practice and practice and practice and practice to be able to present to people. Love to hear that from you. All right. The next one is an activator. Now, an Activate. No, no, sorry, my next one, I'll say act, activate is my number three. Okay, <laughs> I said that first. Uh, I, I was looking at my wrong list. I've got them all systemized um, into categories. But um, my next, my number three is an activator. Now, an activator is an influencing, just like communication is an influencing. An activator is somebody who can inspire everybody. So, like, let's just get this stuff happening. They're really good at inspiring people to just get started. Now, where are the advantages with that? Well, they are obvious that, you know, for me as a person who mentors and coaches people, I can really motivate them to look, let's just get this shit happening. Let's make this happen. You know, how can I help you? I, you can do it. You can do it. Here's where you start. So that's why I focus a lot on where do you start? What's going to be the fastest path? Let's get rid of all the clutter and just focus on what's important. So that's one thing that I do really well. Um, where it can become a disadvantage is very often I'll do that myself. So I, you know, I'm, I'm very 
I implement very, very fast. But it also means that sometimes I can go, right, let's just get this happening. I will make things happen really fast, but I may not necessarily um, have briefed everybody around me about what we're doing because I'll just go straight ahead. Um, And so I have to make myself slow down and bring the people on my team along at the same pace. So for me, that is what can I be doing better? Well, if I'm going to be an activator, If I want to activate others, I've got to make sure that they fully understand why we're going at this pace and boom, we can all go at the same direction. Um, And the same when it comes with working with my clients. For me to motivate you, it's not just enough for me to inspire you to start. Then my thing is, okay, well, what do I do to make it easy for you to start? So that's why you'll notice I use lots of action plans, cheat sheets, um, templates, those sorts of things, because I know that that's going to help you to just get that stuff happening now. And why I focus a lot on scare sighted, you know, it scares you, but let's just step into that and grab the excitement and make this happen now. It's why I run with my VIP clients, what I call GSD days, also known as get shit done days. Um, That's why I do them because that's a natural way for me to work. So build on that. So is that, does that sound like you? Are, are you somebody who can inspire people to get started? Or maybe if I'm looking across here at some of the other ones that people have, so that's an activator, maybe the way that you, that you really inspire people is you're very highly competitive. You know, being competitive is actually a strength. Are you really good at motivating a team to beat somebody else's score or what somebody else is doing? Um, that may be something that's that becomes natural to you for me it doesn't um i'll never i have to really work hard to be able to compare you know to beat somebody else or another group i'm more in let's just get going and get this happening (laughs) um okay so now i'll look at what is my number two strategic so for me it's very very easy when i work with my clients to see okay these are the next steps you've got to do to get to there And this is what I see is unique about you. And it's really, really easy for me to say, help them work out their steps in their programs that they work with their clients, for me to work out their signature system, for me to work out, okay, in order for you to get to where you want to go with how we've defined specifically for you what your business model and success is going to be, I find it really, really easy to see the patterns. What are the steps? What needs to be done? What has to be done in what order? Even if it's not my own business, I can come into somebody else's business and just do that so fast. Something that other people may have to work through a long process and it may take them days, weeks or months. I can kind of walk in and go, it's obvious, isn't it? Isn't this obvious? Like, you know, let's just knock this over. We can activate it. Let's just knock this over. I can can map it all out for you in an hour. (laughs) Um, It's because for me, those patterns are really, really obvious. That's uh, strategic. That is a really, really good way to be able to do that. Where it can become a disadvantage for me is I can see what is possible and I get excited about what is there. And... um, And I'm just really keen to let's just make this happen. Um, And so there can be that real, you know, a pull to me to want to move forward where I've just got to hang on, stop, and let's just get these other, you know, these things that we're already doing in place. (laughs) So that can be a drawback on strategic. But if you understand that that is an advantage that you've got, then doing those things that allow you to go in and use that zone of genius. And so I think this is one of the things that I've been fortunate in the business model I've chosen, working with different business owners to help them create their online programs, their frameworks, what's unique about them, is I've got to work with so many different businesses now, so many different people that I've really got to test myself on, can I do it for somebody that works in something that that is, I've never worked with somebody in that industry before, or that, or a person with those type of personality traits. So that's a great way to practice and get better at it. So that's um, those ones there. So, so far, two of those have been uh, communicator and activator were in influencing and the strategic was in strategic thinking. Well, seems like the meta name. Okay, I've got two left and these are the ones that are for me. Um, The next one is called WOO, which I thought was really interesting, but it's an acronym for 
winning others over. And this is another influencer. So I've got three in the influencing group, which means I can really help people to just get stuff done and keep them motivated. Um, and and the woo is means that I really love meeting new people and also making them feel welcome, you know, breaking that ice. You know, when I've gone away traveling with friends, say we've gone to, I remember one time in particular going away um, to a business conference over in the United States and there were four of us and um, four women all traveling together and we were, you know, we were doing a bit of a, a road trip as well. And when we needed to find instructions or somewhere or where was the best place to go for dinner or, um, you know, even just, you know, just making those decisions, finding your way around things, the girls would actually, the other three would turn to me and say, Janet, go and find us a friend, will you? Um, and find out the answer. I go, okay. <laughs> and find a friend who would be not just tell us the answer, but want to come over and <laughs> and um, meet all of my other friends. And can I help you to get there? So, and that's just a natural thing to do. It's something I like doing. So that's why it's really good. You know, I've been able to hone that through the work that I do um, by really helping people to feel welcome. And then also that motivates them to, to go and do things for themselves. <laughs> um, but where is there a drawback? Yep, for me there is a drawback that um, I sometimes I just need to stop talking and just get the stuff done. <laughs> if there is somebody new here that I haven't met before, I will be, I'll just really want to go and know their story. I just really want to know them. I want to meet them. I want to get to know them rather than going, all right, just step back and let's just focus on whatever else you're here for. Um, so for me, it's kind of like, oh, there's a potential friend, but I'm not. I'm going to ignore them for the moment because I've got other things to do. So that is a drawback. Okay, now the last one, which is positivity, I would have thought would have fitted in under influencing, but it doesn't. It fits in under relationships, and positivity is is is. Uh, I've actually got a whole list of all of the summaries here. Um, it's basically they can get excited about things that they're going to do. It's you know a contagious enthusiasm, um, and so you can see that you know combining that with an activator to get people to get stuff done <laughs> um, and winning people over. That's why that's I think that's why my clients get results as long as especially if they're working with me closely is I'll just keep them motivated so that when they start to get the self-doubts, I still believe in them. Let's go, go, go. Um, you know, we can do this. We can do this, you know, supporting all the way. It's something so they get the results because they'll keep motivated. They keep on going. They'll The self-doubts don't have a chance to stay there for too long. Um, so I think that may be one of those reasons, plus combined with the strategic, you know, of where are we going. Um, so for me, that's been how using those strengths has meant that I've stayed in the right work in my business. Now, let me tell you about a time when I didn't and what it did to my business. Now, my business, Wonderful Web Women, had, uh, was very much starting from me doing communicating constantly. I was doing interviews every single week and I um, was motivating people to take action. That was my business model. You know, people paid for the recordings. People paid to be part of the tribe to get motivated. And that worked really well. And I was always in my flow. I felt great. But then it got to a point where I was I started listening too much to, you know, what I thought I should have been doing. Because I'd been doing this for years. And I thought, well, the sensible thing is how can I move myself out of the business so much? You know, how much can I systemize this whole business and move myself out of it? Because that's a clever thing to do, you know, to get myself out of it as much. And then I'll just sit on the beach and just let it run. So that's what I started to do. I really automated so much of the things that I was doing that I wasn't doing as many of them, which is a good thing. But what I was also doing was I was really automating the the communication the motivating so i stopped doing so much of that hands on and a lot more of it was sort of like pre recorded um it was there was less of the live stuff and you know what i stopped bringing my energy into the business and i could feel that i was starting to get lost 
because I wasn't in my zone of genius all the time. And I could feel that the energy within the tribe that I'd been creating was kind of dropping down a bit. And I was thinking, what am I doing wrong? I've been building the business. And as part of my, um, you know, doing a whole reinvention of my brand to close Wonderful Web Women and open up Romance Your Tribe, as part of that, I worked through a process, including these strength tests, to really get clear on, you know, what did I want? What were the things that lit me up? What did I want to include in the business because I loved doing it, regardless of if it's efficient or not? Um, and that's actually one of the processes that I work with my clients, every client, through the Profit in You module. I guide you through that process. So you know that you're creating a business that is as systemized as it, as it can be, but still gives you that opportunity to do what lights you up, what you do well. And as part of that, I recognize, you know what? I really need to be doing a lot more of this live communicating and that's why you'll notice that's that's the reason why I do a, a weekly podcast and why every second one is an interview with somebody who I respect because that feeds my soul I missed it and I am loving it that's I'm just I really love doing all those interviews and it's why through my with working with my clients that I'm doing a lot more of that hot seating you know with my VIP clients we're hot seating every single week I tried to move myself out of it but I it just I didn't I didn't get the joy so now every single week I'm connecting in person with my VIP clients and having the opportunity to do the strategic stuff do the communicating um, and I love it. I, they are the highlights of my week working with my clients in those live video huddles. Love it. Like my energy after those is high. Um, so for me, that's what I did. I really I had to build that back in. So for you, I want you to ask yourself, what? It, go and do this. Go and do the strength test. So it's like to go and do the five ones is like twenty bucks. Like we're not talking hundreds here. Um, is have a look at those and are you allowing yourself to do those things that you do really really well like are you allowing yourself to be in your zone of genius because not only is it going to make your business stronger you get so much more joy from what you're doing you will really you know it brings that beautiful energy and that infuses through everything that you're doing so i want you to ask yourself you know am i actually allowing myself to perfect to really get better at the five things that I'm naturally really really good at and if I'm not what can I do to change either the way I'm marketing or the way I've structured my business what can I do so that I make sure I bring that in and I can systemize the other things that you know that are the things that I perhaps don't do as well um, so that's why my business has got lots of checklists. It's why I'm systemized because I'm really good at working out what we need to do, but I need to delegate to every, to my team. Um, and so, and I don't want to be involved in that nitty gritty sort of stuff. So that's why we have systems and processes and they just have to follow it. Um, so, you know, are you systemizing the things that are not your zone of genius or finding somebody who you can bring in that can do that stuff that loves doing it weirdly? Um, so that's my lessons to you. So what we've covered is why the Gallup Strengths Test or the Clifton um, Strength Finders Test. Both names, both will get you to there. Um, and the links are here. Um, I'll have them on the podcast notes and in the cheat sheet that I've got for you um, to go with this. So we've looked at why would you do those anyway. Remember the story I told you about, you know, if you're weak at something, doesn't matter how hard you work at it, you're very, it's very hard for you to get better than somebody at the level who's naturally good at it and just didn't even try. <laughs> but if you are good at something and you work at honing that craft, you are going to just be amazing. Um, so we talked about that. I've shared with you the four different themes that the Gallup Strength Test fit under. They were in brief, influencing, strategic thinking, relationships and executing. And then I've shared with you personally, like, what are my five strengths and what does that mean for me and my business? What does it mean if I you know, with each of those strengths, what makes it so that I can do things well, but what are the drawbacks that I have to be aware of that come with having that strength? And 
what went wrong when I decided to ignore those strengths and actually cut a lot of those things that I did naturally well, cut them out of the business. What went wrong? And then what did I do to correct that? So that's my little wrap up of what we've done. And my challenge to you is go and do it. Go and do it now. This is Janet the Activator saying go now. Um, It's only 20 bucks. It doesn't take a long time to do it, but you get the really comprehensive report on what does that mean for you. Um, If you're working with me in any of my programs, I've got the links there for you. Um, Whether you're in the success circle, whether you're in my accelerator program, or you're working me closely with me um, as one of my tribal leaders, no matter what one of those you're doing, share what those results are. Because as part of that tribe, I will then with my strategic understanding be able to say, you know what, looking at this, This is the kind of stuff that I could see would work really well with you when it comes to running your business and designing your business model with that combo that you've got. Um, I love doing that stuff. It's kind of fun. So, yeah, if that's part of what, you you know, that's what we do in part of the program and we base that as a foundation to build your business. So it's really going to be uniquely you. Um, Yep, so go and do that there. Otherwise, come over into the Romance Your Tribe Facebook group it's free um, and you have to apply to be in there um, so um, and when you get in there that's where we can talk about this in more detail so go and do the test and go and share in that group as well and we'll have another really good discussion there on what does that mean see if you can find other people who have some of the strengths that you have and what does that look like for them when it comes to implementing okay I love this stuff in business like business development personal development same thing for me there is no faster vehicle for personal development than running your own business so the more that you can get to understand about yourself and develop um, your understanding of your strengths and how to build on those the stronger you're going to be in your business so you can never do enough of this work Um, so I would love to hear from you Um, either send me an email if you're in my programs hey we will uh, let me let me help you work out how to use these in your business if you're in the romance your tribe free facebook group find others who've got the same strength drop me an email i would love to hear from you and if you're on the podcast page go down here and leave some comments because people don't leave comments so much on blog posts anymore they tend to come over and, and use it on social media so i get excited when somebody actually leaves a comment um it's not just me it's i've been my peers have been finding that as well people don't leave as many comments on blogs but they'll come over and talk to you on facebook And you can come talk to me over there. Okay, go get them, folks. Looking forward to hearing uh, what your strengths are, baby. Bye.